Right. So, hey, Brian, how's it going? Hey, Kristen, how are you doing? Good. The time's getting close. You know, yes. I, I thought it would be a good idea for us to talk a little bit about direct primary care. A lot of people have questions out here in California. People just don't know what it is. So what would you tell people like just to uh, allow them to know what we're, we're doing and what direct primary care is? Because a, a lot of people think it's the same thing as concierge medicine. Right. That is a very common question that we're getting. Um, two big differences. So direct primary care, for those who aren't familiar, is a uh, primary care model that takes out the middleman, that takes out insurance. Um, patients pay a usually a monthly, sometimes quarterly or annual fee, depending on the, how the practice is set up. And it encompasses all of their primary care needs. It also has direct access to the physician through email, text messaging, phone calls, and it allows a lot more access to the doctor. Um, and how that differs from concierge medicine is that concierge medicine also bills insurance. Uh, direct primary care, we do not bill insurance. We take out that middleman. Um, it allows us to spend more time with the patients. We don't have to meet a quota of patients every day or every quarter. And it really just allows us to bring more value and time to our experience with the patients. Yeah, the way I always look at it is it's kind of like a triple A plan. Like triple A, uh, I pay them every month. It just goes on my credit card. I have no idea what I'm paying them. I actually, I really have no idea. But <laughs> in 30 years, I've used them six times. You know, I've used them once. My daughter's used them a couple of times. My wife's used them once. And But when we need them, we can call them and they're there right away. We're not stuck in the middle of the desert somewhere and trying to figure it out for ourselves. So that's what Kristen's talking about too, the, the access to care. So you could text us, email us, get in touch with us without going through three or four people to, to get there. So, you know, that, that's a huge benefit for us and for our patients. And the, the ability to do this, uh, telemedicine, we could, you know, if you don't feel like coming in, we could do it remotely. Um, if you can't get off work that day, if you're not feeling great and you don't want to get out of bed, we could talk to you right from your house. And that's kind of cool, huh, Kristen? It's so cool. And it's especially cool at times like this when you have a viral outbreak that's keeping people homebound nice to have access to your physician through a telemedicine platform without having to leave your house and exposing yourself to risk. Or if you just don't have time, it's very efficient. Um, yeah, lots of benefits to it. And also a lot of people are concerned if they have Medicare or a, a PPO insurance, they're concerned about going to specialists and how does this affect uh, the specialists? Right, so we always recommend patients do keep their insurance plan, but usually you can change it to like a higher deductible uh, insurance plan to cover for emergency costs for unforeseen accidents and things that might arise. But direct primary care doctors usually have a relationship with not only labs and imaging centers, but also specialty providers like your orthopedics and dermatologists that'll give our patients a discounted rate and quicker access to getting in. And then you, you still have, if you still carry your insurance, you can bill through insurance as well for, for specialists. But um, there's usually a good working relationship between the direct primary care doctors and specialists that they refer their patients to. Yeah, and I think the specialists really like having direct primary care doctors because uh, they don't have to deal with insurance. Uh, they don't have to hassle with it. The person uh, runs their credit card. You know, a personal example, my daughter needed to get an MRI of her knee. Through insurance, it was going to be $1,250. When, they, when I asked my copay, it was going to be 450 and when I told them I was going to do cash pay, it was 250 So, you know, when it drops that significant $1,000 difference, that is ridiculous. And, and that's what we're seeing the same thing with medications. We're seeing the same thing with, with other um, specialties that they'll say, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll charge this much for a joint injection or for colonoscopies. And that's why people are really concerned because they think, gosh, if I have to get an MRI or something, it's going to break my bank account. And that's mm -hmm. not what happens, you know, especially if, yeah. if you know, you, most of us are going to pay a lot of money for those studies anyways, because of the, the negotiations of the insurance company with the um, providers. Exactly. Yeah. When you take out the insurance companies, prices tend to drop dramatically. And that's for labs and imaging and specialists all across the board. Yeah, and also uh, the concerns for labs, again, with, with Medicare, we can bill um, 
laboratories through Medicare still. And a lot of the PPO plans will allow us to act just like we're the primary. The only time where it's a catch is the HMO plans because we had to opt out of insurance. We can't do referrals for HMO patients for the CDI doctor and, and uh, uh, other specialists because it has to go through their primary. So there are some people that want us to be there for emergencies and to, to help them with metabolic disease, diabetes, and they will still have a different primary. And that's kind of a new uh, thought for us because you know, in general, we've been the primary. Yeah, and I think that's it's really going to be the future of where medicine is going, and hopefully uh, now that there is such a focus on metabolic health, and we plan to have our own platform separate from primary care to address metabolic health issues for patients that do want to keep their primary that they see now or that have HMO, we can still help them. We'll have like a three or four month program um, to get their diabetes under control or in remission, um, to help them with their fatty liver disease, their hypertension. Uh, it is a platform that is separate from direct primary care. And the, also the other benefit is that we can now educate our patients. We'll have time to give lectures and have uh, videos like this available on our website because we love this and because we could reach way more people doing this than we can one on one. So, you know, having the combination of both or if there's a message that's, that's complicated, we can have you watch the video and, and then we can answer any questions you might have. And that's fun. That's a lot of fun for us because we'll be doing talks together and community outreaches and helping with the students and things like that. Yes, absolutely. And it also gives us a chance to focus on prevention for people who don't necessarily have diabetes or metabolic disease now, but are interested in preventing these things from developing, uh, being able to speak to an audience to target um, the college student population. It really gives us a good uh, opportunity to help with prevention, which is usually lacking in, in westernized medicine. I think the way we look at it is we're like the mechanics who want to keep your car running forever. We don't want to wait till you blow up your engine and then be the best at changing the engine. We're really focused on primary care as far as prevention, really focusing on how to keep you healthy if you're healthy and if you're sick, how to get you healthy so that you could run on your own and not need us all the time because we have a vested interest in having you be healthier and uh, healthier and exercising and active. And, you know, the other thing, thing that we're really excited about is that we can do uh, more group type activities. You know, once all the COVID stuff's over, we'll be able to go for hikes together and go for walks or go work out. We know a couple of gym owners who would love to have our business. So if we can come up with a cash pay price for our, our uh, people, they'll be happy, we'll be happy, and it will be kind of a cool thing for all of us to get together and be able to talk. And if you want to ask us medical questions, you can because you're paying for that service. Exactly. And it really fosters a sense of community, meeting other patients and members who are in similar positions. You can share recipes, go on walks together, hikes together. It really does become a lifestyle that uh, people want to spread the word and be around people with similar interests and, and lifestyles. Yeah, and for us, it's access. Having access is key, you know, for you to be able to get in touch with us. Right now, I have to, you have to go through three people to get to me just because I have so many patients um, that it's not feasible. It's going to be great because you'll have the ability to text us and say, hey, can you refill my medicines without having to wait on hold and, and go through all that. So it, it just really takes all the middle people out from, from between us. Um, we're going to have uh, 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 some assistance in the office. You know, we'll have an office manager to help keep things running smoothly, uh, medical assistance. And so the big thing we're doing to keep the cost down is, is we're cutting our overhead. You know, we have a, a lot smaller staff and we're, we're going to have a great facility. Uh, but it's going to be smaller than what we're used to here in my big office. Why? Because we don't need to have a bunch of exam rooms because we're spending more time with each patient and there's not going to be a big waiting uh, time. Exactly. And I think patients don't always realize your traditional primary care doctor employed by a hospital and taking insurance has a patient panel usually of about 2,500 patients. Whereas direct primary care physicians usually have a, between four to 600 patients and their patient panel, which is a huge drop. And like you said, we can cut our overhead costs dramatically doing a direct primary care model. So the patients that we do have really get our undivided attention when they're there. You can spend 45 minutes to an hour for a patient visit because you're not forced to see 30 patients a day. You're quick to do callbacks and it's, it's really a great model for, for patient-focused care. 
And also right now in my current practice, I'm booked out six to eight months for annual exams. So if you don't schedule it now, you won't have one next year. In our new practice, we'll be able to do that in the next week, the next day, even, you know, depending on what our schedule's like. And that's pretty awesome that, uh, that you can have access. If you're not feeling well, you don't want to wait four or five days to be seen by then. You either died or you got better. So we want to see you right at the beginning and try to help you out and, and, uh, you know, and, and make you feel like we, we are, you know, a family and a team and, and we're all working together on that. So, you know, it's exciting for us as docs who've been kind of beaten down by the system to be able to really take all the paperwork out of it and just spend more time with patients. Exactly. It's a win-win for everyone. Patients are happier. The physicians are happier. The healthcare overall is improved. We're focusing on prevention and metabolic health and that keeps people healthy. So they don't need us on a frequent basis, then they're active and enjoying their life instead. Yeah, and I think the other important thing, Kristen, is that we don't have a huge waiting room where you're going to be sitting with a bunch of people. You know, we're, we're going to bring you straight back to my office or Kristen's office and and get you so that you're seeing your doctor instead of being with a bunch of coughing, sneezing people. And I think that's important. You know, really is that we can we can uh, streamline things so that it's not such a hassle. It's like being at the airport with tons of people and there's no seats and everyone's on top of each other, especially at times like this when we, when we have COVID and, and different infections, the flu season happens every year. And so to be able to prevent some of that is critical and, and to decrease your exposure. And if you don't want to come in, you want to do it online, we're happy to do that. Because again, yeah. if you want to cancel the same day, no problem, because we can get someone else in that time slot and we're not going to have to work through lunch the next day to make up for it. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, with telemedicine now too, if you're sick and coughing and don't want to leave your home, you don't have to. We can consult with our patients like we're doing now through video conferencing and telemedicine. And it's, it's a really great feature to have. Kristen, have you had any other uh, concerns or questions that people have had about direct primary care? You know, not specifically. People are really more concerned about how it's billed, um, what the average prices are per month, or if they do like an a annual plan. Um, and, you know, the typical price, average price for direct primary care is usually about $75 to $100 per month. Um, some, some models vary. If you're older or have more comorbidities, it's, it's a little bit higher fee. But overall, it's very affordable. Uh, I think that you know, everyone's always worried about finances, rightfully so, especially when it comes to medical care. So I think being straightforward with your prices is, is very uh, important. And there's going to be no hidden fees, no, oh, I came in and suddenly you're getting a thousand dollar bill in the mail. That's, that's not going to happen with the direct primary care. Yeah, it's kind of like when you go to an all-inclusive resort, even though you paid for it, when you leave, you don't have to find your wallet and have to pay. And that's really cool and really nice. And, and uh, you know, that's a big part of it, not having nickel and dime co-pays and all this kind of stuff. We want it to be where, you know, you come in, we have a good time, we get to laugh a little bit, have fun. And, and if you want to go for a walk around the neighborhood, we could do that. If you want to go work out, we could do that because that is your time. And couples, it's great because you can come in together and we could spend an hour, hour and a half together. It's great because uh, we're available. And that's, that's really exciting to docs because that's what we wanted the medicine to do. And that's why this kind of medicine is really exciting to us. And we can hardly wait. Yeah. How about you, Brian? Any questions you get regarding the direct primary care model? No, I think that's it. I think people are just worried about what, has, what happens if I get really sick, if I get cancer, if I get other uh, major disease, if I have to end up in the hospital. The reality is it's the same um, as what we're doing now. You know, you would see the same specialist you're seeing now. It, seeing us doesn't preclude you from your specialist that you love and, and care for and, and have been taking great care of you. So our, our goal is to facilitate things and, and work with the, primary, with, the, with the primaries in town also if we're doing metabolic disease uh, uh, help help with them because a lot of times what happens is the doctors aren't equipped to help with, with diabetes and management, but we're going to be well equipped for that. You know, we, we can monitor people remotely. We could look at blood pressures and weight and, and uh, 24 hour glucose. Uh, that's huge. No one in the world is really doing this kind of medicine. And the other thing that's special about our, our practice is we have two docs. A lot of times it's just one doc. And so if they're on vacation or they're unavailable, the patient's kind of stuck until they can get to a place to call them back for us. If I happen to be out of town, Kristen will be there. And if, if she's out of town, I'll be there. So we're going to really work hard and, and make sure that each of us is taken care of in that when I, 
right now I hate to go on vacation because I know what's going to happen before and after I get back. Uh, it's always a nightmare. It's always been a nightmare. So having someone have my back is a huge deal. And both of us feel that way that, hey, if your patient's in need, we'll take care of them. You know, and so it's, it's exactly. very reassuring that we could actually have a little bit of a life. So that's the benefit we get from it. Yes, yes. Like I said, it's going to be better for both patients and physicians. And it's probably the wave of where primary care is going right now because patients are demanding it. They want it. They want more access. They want more time with their physicians. And it's also going to help prevent physician burnout, which is a very real problem. Yeah. And the other thing, it's an ideal uh, medicine style for people with really high deductibles because right now when you go to the doc, they don't know what to charge you and they're probably overcharging for, for an office visit because they're used to the insurance model. So now just knowing, hey, uh, if, I, if I'm sick and I need to be seen, I'm not going to get nickel and dimed because the problem with the high deductible plan is people are afraid to go in. So they put things off longer and then the disease process gets worse. So what we want to do is say, hey, I'm not feeling great. Give us a call right away and we'll, we're, we're going to get you squared away and, and answer questions. And, um, you know, it's exciting for us because you know, we, that's what we want. And in between patients, we could text you back, call you, email you. Um, we're not afraid of you having access to us because that's the service we provide. Exactly. Yep. Well said. <laughs> yeah. So again, you know, the high deductible plans are ideal. So a lot of people, what they do from the financial aspect, if they, had, it's like on your, in your car, if you have, uh, uh, you know, bumper to bumper, everything covered, it's very expensive. A lot of people just get uh, liability. So it's a lot cheaper month to month. And then they put some money aside in case they have a big accident. It's kind of what we do too. That's what I do with personally. I'm, I'm a member of uh, Christian Healthcare Ministries uh, Insurance and I pay cash everywhere I go because because I'm able to do that because of the money I save every month. Instead of paying $1,000 a month, I'm paying $150 a month. So that extra money every month comes in handy and I store it away. So I have an emergency fund in case I need do need to get an MRI or a CAT scan or something unexpected. Um, you know, it, it's really reassuring to 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 know that, you know, that I'm not paying so much money every month, you know. Exactly. Yeah. It's, there's a big cost savings to be had there. Yeah. And I think the bottom line is, is having better health. You know, you don't want to feel like you're a burden on your doctor. Um, sometimes we feel that way. When I have a full schedule and eight people want to be seen that day, it's devastating, you know, cause I know I'm not going to see my family that day. And uh, so, you know, it goes both ways. We appreciate what we have and we hope our patients do. And that's the other reason we do month to month, because if you're not happy with us, great. Uh, you know, it, it, that's the relationship we have. Then you, 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 we're not going to tie you into a five-year contract. Um, like the cable companies do or your cell phone, you're kind of stuck yeah. sometimes. You're like, the, the service is terrible and they don't care because you're stuck. So we, we have to have uh, patient service. We have to have customer service, obviously. Um, and you have to feel welcome and com comfortable and, and, uh, and, the, the other side of the coin is uh, we don't want you calling us at three in the morning just because you can, you know, just because you have access because we like to sleep and to get our beauty rest also. So, you know, that's one thing. It goes both ways. And if people are abusing the system, we say, hey, the, you know, we, we can't allow that. Um, obviously, people get scared in the middle of the night and have concerns and we want to be there and, and as we always have been. But uh, also being respectful of each other and, and our time and, and your time and, and you know, trying to do what we can and think ahead. If you need refills, we want to get that done before uh, you need them, you know, not after you ran out of medicines, you know, things like that. They're just, you know, common decency and courtesy and, and just kind of planning ahead. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Having direct access makes it easier for, for the patients. We can hopefully prevent them from getting to the point where they run out of their medications. If they know if they're worried in the middle of the night, though, we'll be there for them. Yeah, and I think that's it. You know, going through this transition, hearing everyone say, hey, I got you on this. I got you the business part. I have the website part. And that's kind of what we think is like, hey, we got you. You know, we want to take care of you. We want to be, you know, have that relationship where you don't, you know, a lot of people don't like to go to the doctor's office. And we want you to look forward to it, you know, be at peace and, and have nice music and, and a relaxing environment and and uh, just kind of like you're at the spa. That's how we want it to be, that you feel like your your health is being, your your health needs are being met. And that we're taking care of you, that we're there when you need us. And, and again, going back to AAA, it's, I don't call them every day because I have their service. I do it when I need them. And when I need them, they've always been there. And that's why I keep paying the money. And that's kind of what we're talking about. Exactly. Yes. 
So, hey, thank you. We just wanted to, to make sure we could clarify some of these things, and I'm sure there will be bumps in the roads, and we're, we're, we're going to figure things out, how to save more money from our, our perspective, and how to make it just a great medical experience for you, you know, and, and you know, again, the longer we keep you around, the longer we keep you healthy, the better off we all do, you know, that we all have the same interest uh, yeah. of good health. Exactly. It's a shared interest. If we can help you get there and you stay healthy, that's the goal. <laughs> and we also know from our standpoint that if we provide excellent service, when we provide excellent service, you're going to tell your neighbors and their friends. And, and so we'll never, uh, you know, have to advertise. We'll never have to beg for patients because um, we really want the type of patients that we can really help, you know, uh, people who are focused on their health and want to maintain it. And also people who've had a bad time of it, but are ready to, to really turn that, that vehicle around and get it tuned up and get your body to where it needs to be. You know, I think we all have the same plans and we want to be able to play with our grandkids and spend time with family and do all those things. And I think this is the style of medicine that really allows that. So Christian, yeah. you can close us cause you're the, you're the boss here. Oh, no. I th you're the one with the podcast experience. This is all new to me. But uh, no, I, th I think you did a good job of explaining what direct primary care is. And our website is just about to go live. So people can check that out and send us messages and comments on there if they have more questions. It's slowcarbmd, sandiego.com. And we're both on Twitter and Instagram and you know, if there's questions, concerns about it, let us know. We're happy to address them. Yeah, and we also have a temporary PO box, just so if you have any uh, correspondence you want to do to send us letters and things like that, that's on our website. And then we didn't want to overwhelm the school yet, but once we uh, go live in July, obviously we're going to be at the school address. So um, we're excited, you know, they're excited to have us and we're excited to be there. And, and um, uh, you know, it's going to be fun, you know, discovering this new, introducing this new way of medicine. It's not new. It's been around for years, but in San Diego, California is pretty new. We have some up in Orange County, but nowhere really close, especially in East County. And that's one great thing. I'm an East County guy and it's great to be able to bring quality healthcare to East County, especially. Yeah. It's, it's needed from what you say. I'm happy we can provide a service to, to East County. And we're dragging Kristen all the way out from, from uh, Chicago. I wouldn't say dragging. I'm quite happy to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think our weather's dragging here. So everyone, Hey, yeah. thanks for sticking with us. Uh, hopefully this answers some of your questions and, and allays some of your fears. And if you do have questions, please feel free to, to reach out to us. All right. Take have care. a great day.